just realize that this is not uh, this is not another organization. Yes, God has blessed us with two thrift stores, and we're excited to announce that Treasures for Love has now opened. Welcome to today's episode of Community Connections, a loving podcast. This is episode six, and this podcast is all about connecting local churches and organizations in ministry in the Stanton, Waynesboro, and Augusta County community. Today, I'm here with Debbie Ramsey, Executive Director of Love, Inc., and uh, we're here to discuss the opening of where we're at right now, the Treasures for Love thrift store um, in Fishersville, but we're going to talk about that closer to the, to the end of the show. Uh, before we get to that, I had the opportunity to sit down with actually Debbie's pastor over at White Hill Church of the Brethren, Dave Chapel, and we just uh, really dug into what Love Inc. being a part of a church means, both for him as a pastor, but also for the congregation itself in what that means for a church culture. And I think um, if you're someone who's wondering how Love Inc. impacts the life and the culture of a church, um, then this interview will certainly speak to you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and about uh, your church. Well, Dave Chapel. I've been here at White Hill, believe it or not, since I was a kid. I grew up here. My dad was the pastor here. And you never, uh, it's one of those things, you don't know what the Lord has in store for you, but it's certainly you don't always uh, imagine what the novel's going to look like. And so I was gone for a while and then ended up back here as youth pastor. Here I am now, senior pastor. With my dad as my associate pastor. <laughs> it's an interesting dynamic. It's an interesting dynamic. So, you know, I sometimes think, has White Hill had, uh, White Hill's had us around here now for almost 35 years combined. Wow, almost like it. I know, I'm like, oh, are they done with us yet? <laughs> but no, this is what the Lord has decided and, and this is what He's put in place and certainly not what uh, our expectations were, but here we are. And so it's just been a, just been a blessing to, to be a part of this congregation and watch them grow and uh, really just seek the face of the Lord and desire to be fruitful as He's called them to be. That's great. So, yeah. That's so. Awesome. so how did you uh, originally get involved with Love, Inc.? Wow. Uh, like I said, I think is, I, I feel like 08, 09, somewhere around there, uh, uh, Pastor Bruce Hankey and myself had just been chatting a little bit about how the churches might be working, able to work together a little bit. And uh, out of that came a gathering of some pastors that just began to seek the face of the Lord of how that uh, might look. And in the process, the name Love, Inc. came up. And uh, so we began to look at uh, Love, Inc. Uh, that uh, Bruce had been a, a part of, I believe, in Pennsylvania. How that might look here. We actually even had uh, a director of one of the franchises came, shared with us a little bit, gave us uh, uh, some idea of how it operated, and uh, uh, through that gathering together, through that uh, meeting together, and through praying together, uh, and asking the Lord to raise someone up, within just, a, I, I don't know complete timelines, but within a couple years' time, uh, Debbie Ramsey felt called, <laughs> was connected with this ministry called Love, Inc., and really, here we are you know, what the Lord has done thus far. Praise the Lord. So, so kind of from the ground up, I guess, a little bit in terms of our, our uh, ministry, loving ministry here in, in Augusta County. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, talk about that vision that you were talking about. You, you and Bruce Hankey were talking and kind of go into what was that original, um, you said churches working together. What was that original spark? I, I just, I recall for myself thinking, you know, Lord, I know each of these congregations, I was thinking, uh, I know Calvary United Methodist has the food bank there. I thought, why, why would we reinvent that wheel? Let's support them in, 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 in that, which we still do to some degree, uh, just encouraging them. And, and uh, various congregations have ministries that the Lord has called them to. What if we all just did them together and supported each other in that? minister to the area. That was just kind of my thinking. And Bruce came to mind. Hey, let me talk to Bruce. Think what he, because he's always kind of thinking in that, in that vein. And so when I went over and met with him at his office, I just remember him saying, hey, I just spoke with social services. I'm going to meet with, a, uh, meet with uh, one of the workers because I have similar thoughts and I want to see how the church might be a 
part of the broader reaching out to the, the community. So it was just one of those moments where the Lord kind of used that really to instigate, well, let's get more together, you know. And Bruce really kind of brought more leadership in uh, bringing a lot of the things, the, the gatherings together, but it was just neat kind of to see a lot of that coming to fruition in, in a variety of ways as the Lord uh, sketched it out, so sure. to say. Yeah. How have you seen that affect the culture of, let's say, White Hill in general, but also transform the lives of your parishioners? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting because since from the very, very get go, we were always encouraging become a part of Love, Inc. But I think along with Love, Inc., we were kind of growing together and learning what did that identity really look like. Because as you know, as we're all beginning to know, we are Love, Inc. I mean, it's not just becoming a part of another ministry. Right. But I realized it took some time to grow into that because we just kind of had to learn that together, sure. you know? And I appreciate how it just kind of organically, we allowed the Holy Spirit to lead us in that. And really what it began is one by one, an individual in the congregation uh, would, uh, would uh, feel led to uh, help out um, in a variety of ways. Uh, I, I think of Sandy Culbertson, I'm not supposed to use names, but Sandy Culbertson, she's been working in the clearinghouse itself, uh, I think dealing with referencing and references and referrals and things like that. And, and she just felt led to do that. And before you know it, now we have another trumpeter, you know, declarer of what the Lord's doing in Love, Inc here within the congregation. And so more begin to hear. And then uh, we, we had another couple uh, become a part of the, uh, of the mentoring aspect. Uh, in fact, you know, Nolan, I'm trying to remember, you know, in the Loving Your Neighbor program, what is it mentors that they call them? Uh, spiritual friends. Spiritual friends, thank you. Um, they, they walked in that as spiritual friends and, and um, uh, of course, then just seeing them ex experiencing what it was to minister to folks that they themselves may never encounter simply, it could simply just geographically may never encounter, but uh, and, and a lot, watching the Lord just use them in the excitement and, and, and the spark that uh, look what the Lord is doing. Wow. And, and, and so even more so. There's more declaring that until now. I don't know an exact number, but I know that there it's uh, well over a dozen or more folks here in our congregation are working in a variety of capacities from working with finances for some of the stores, working volunteering in the stores, in the clearinghouse, as spiritual friends, uh, van drivers, you name it. And uh, it's uh, really Love Inc. has become who a part of who we are. And it really has. It has. And I know we've had discussion like this before. How does that, how can we encourage new congregations that are coming in, yeah. you know, to understand that? I, I don't think that it's something that can, uh, you know, you can sit out and try to uh, explain how do you not just become part of Love Inc., how do you allow it to become part of who you are in general? Uh, that's, that's not as easy to describe what I say is just start walking it out mm -hmm. and letting the Lord lead and just watch what He does and how He does it and the excitement of uh, just the connections that take place, yeah. you know, and the openness in that. Um, it will come about. I do, I, I do always love the idea of any new congregations wanting to know more about what it is to uh, uh, be involved in, in this ministry. Um, I say, wow, come, just, I'd love to sit down and talk with them and say, hey, it really is, it's a growing experience. Don't walk into it thinking, oh, we figured out how this looks. No, because the Lord always is doing something new within it, and I love it. Just like, that's ministry in general, and I just love seeing uh, the body of believers uh, being used accordingly. So, Yeah, so take that pastor who's on the fence, whether they're, they're interested in loving, they're, they're curious about it, they, they've, they've heard, you know, oh, this is going to be great. A great way for my congregation to serve, for us to be Love Inc. to the community. Right. Um, what is your, uh, what's a word to those pastors uh, who are just considering, like, I think this would be a good fit for us, but I'm not sure we're ready. We want to take that leap yet. What do you think would be your word to them to get them to take that leap? You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit, sometimes maybe I come a little bit 
from a back door. Um, my word to them would be, get your mind off what it's going to take to become a part of this, you know. Stop trying to figure it out on paper. Just realize that this is not, uh, this is not another organization. And I know that that's so hard to remove from our frame of thinking. This is not another thing just to do. This is the body of believers in Augusta County being raised up uh, and accomplishing, yes, some things have been put in place, like the Love Your Neighbor program and uh, various other uh, ministries within, but the Lord's always doing something new within Love, Inc. because the Lord's doing new things within the body of believers all around the county. So be a part of what the Lord is doing new. It's not you coming in necessarily to as another body in a ministry. You're actually adding to, literally, based on what God has called your congregation to be. So you're really becoming, a, you are broadening Love, Inc. You are bringing in the breadth and the width and the depth of Love, Inc. because you're a whole other dynamic. And so when I look at White Hill coming, you know, as we've kind of been along this ride for a while, I realize, wow, you know, Love, Inc. really is partially White Hill. Love, Inc. really is partially uh, any of the other church on the hill, uh, other congregations that are out there because we're bringing in what God is doing in our midst and bringing it together. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but I just, it, it removes the thinking of, okay, what's it going to take for us to be a part of this as opposed to, wow, we get to actually be a part of growing this thing it's not because it's just who we are. You know, so that, that's the kind of that, that's how I viewed it, you know. And I feel like people here at White Hill are viewing it that way. You know, yeah, there are those positions that you can enter and be a part of and, and, and sign up for, volunteer for, but it's also literally, I know you walk in and say, the Lord's really laying this on my heart. How can this be of help? How can this be, how can this be of use within this? Uh, I, that's just exciting to me. It's an ever-growing, ever-growing ministry that God's using mm. in a neat way. So, so with that, how uh, how can people find uh, find out more about, I guess, White Hill itself? Oh boy, a lot of word of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're, we're at uh, you know White Hill Church Facebook page, uh, whcob.org is I believe our website. You'll probably double check that and find out I was wrong, but. <laughs> uh, but uh, we meet uh, typically uh, when we're not in interesting seasons like we're in now, we're here at 1045 on Sunday mornings and love to have whoever uh, feels led to be a part of here at White Hill, so yeah. Alrighty, so we mentioned at the start of the show that we had some news about Treasures Full Of, and Debbie will be sharing that with us today. Yes, God has blessed us with two thrift stores, and we're excited to announce that Treasures for Love has now opened. So we're really excited about that. Um, both stores, um, he has blessed us with the opportunity to um, be good stewards of the items that we get from the community, the ones that... Um, are over and beyond what we need for neighbors. And we take them to the stores and it is a huge financial resource to support Love Inc.'s ministries. Do you mind sharing how much of a financial yes. resource that is? Um, actually in 2018, uh, the two stores provided 55% of the operating revenue for the ministry. So that is a huge blessing. and. And he, he has still sustained us through this whole COVID-19. Uh, when the stores were closed, uh, we were able to get um, to have the uh, a gathering place in Stewart's Draft opened um, several weeks ago. And now we're in the process of, you know, having all of the both stores open. So um, many hands over the past 10 weeks have worked very hard to just uh, freshen up and make some really good changes to the store. I cannot wait for people to come in and see um, the, the, it's been painted, it's been organized, it's just, it looks 
amazing. And it is fully stocked for anyone who loves to thrift uh, store shop. And so I hope that you'll be able to come by and look at the treasures. Both stores um, move a lot of product every day. And we have many volunteers who, you know, uh, help to keep that process going. And in the midst of it, we share the love of Christ to, with everybody who comes in the door. So it, it's just an amazing thing for our community, but it also is an extension of what Love Inc. is. Um, so a little bit about what's happening as far as the store. Uh, due to some constraints, we will have a modified schedule at Treasures for Love. Um, well, actually, it's at both stores. The sister store has a little bit of a modified schedule, but Treasures for Love will be open on Wednesday through Fridays from 10 to 3. And then it's a reminder that our sister store, uh, a gathering place in Stewart's Draft, is open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 3. Uh, we shortened those hours some too, just to um, you know, get everybody back into uh, feeling comfortable about being there, but also to be able to uh, to not overtax our volunteers. Um, both stores, wow, we have uh, high quality new and used items uh, that have been donated from our community. Our donation center um, has been open on Wednesdays and it is flowing. And I just talked to Ethan. This is a little tidbit that nobody knows about that we look like we're going to be expanding those hours. So we'll know more about that next week. Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> yes. Um, but anyway, we have each store has furniture and household items, craft supplies, books, clothing, any type of clothing that you could possibly think of, home decor, and you have no idea what you're going to find. So um, it's just a it's a it's a time that you can come in and in a very uh, comfortable, beautifully staged setting, you can just take your time and shop. Uh, we will be following the the requirements by the the state on social distancing, on mask use. Um, for our volunteers and for the people who come in, um, you know, masks are required unless you have a health issue. Um, so we just we're just trying to keep everything uh, up to code and make everybody feel comfortable and safe. Um, we have been very dead. We have been very blessed with dedicated staff, uh, a team of volunteers, and they take much pride in the way this both stores look. It, it's just it blows me away of how nice that they uh, put everything together. And, you know, we just, it, it offers a top-notch shopping experience. So um, I think it goes back to you now. Very good. <laughs> it's like we're running a news network now. Yes. Back to me, Nolan. <laughs> All right. So before we close out, we actually had one uh, emailed question. I was like, well, wow, we got a question. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, from a gentleman, I believe his name is Bobby. And he asked, um, what, what, what is it going to look like in the future for Redemptive Compassion, the class that we teach all new staff, volunteers, and people who want to learn a little bit, bit more of why we do what we do and how we do what we do. Um, and so he was asking, will Redemptive Compassion in the future uh, offer online classes? And I actually spoke to Bill Roberts, who um, is kind of heads that up and uh, uh, has taught many, many times in the past. And he said that that's something that we're looking to in the future. Yes, it's kind of on his radar. We're thinking about it, but um, it's not necessarily in the very near future. But uh, certainly keep your eye out for it. But it's definitely uh, a little more down the road that we're thinking about doing that. So that's the answer. Um, for that. And uh, either way, uh, thank you for listening to Community Connections. If you'd like to learn more about Love Inc., you can visit our website at www.loveincswa.org. Um, and thanks so much for listening. And remember that mobilized churches transform lives. Have a great week.